Today we're taking a trip down memory lane and playing a game that was released just over a decade ago. Wayne Rooney was the cover star, Manchester United were the reigning Premier League champion, Sir Alex Ferguson was still in charge and life was pretty great. Plenty of things were very different, some things never changed though. Career mode was 15 seasons long and the EA servers are not available at this time. Anyway though, so today we're going to be revisiting FIFA 10 career mode, or FIFA 10 manager mode in fact as it was called at the time, taking a look at the different features that were available back then and seeing how the game holds up a full decade later. By the way, did anyone else just used to spend 90% of their time messing around in the arena? You didn't even really need any other game modes when you could just have fun smashing the ball into the back of the net over and over again with Wayne Rooney good times. Right though, let's take a look at FIFA 10 manager mode then. We'll have a look around at all the different features, then we'll get into some gameplay and see how it feels 10 years later. I'm probably going to be absolutely terrible, but hopefully we'll have some fun with it anyway. Let me know in the comments section down below if there are any other older games that you want to see me play, and if we can smash out over 2,000 likes today, then I'll be sure to do a few more videos like this one in the not too distant future. So be sure to stick around and subscribe if you want to see more, and if you do leave me a comment regarding future videos, then it will be seen as I do read absolutely every single comment that's left for me. Right then, so I'm going to be choosing Manchester United for today's video, we got 61 million to spend apparently, which seems pretty good for 2009. Rooney's our best forward, Carrick's our best midfielder, and Vidic is our best defender. And how good is this? Instead of just having a generic news story, it's laid out like an article on TalkSport. Already FIFA 10 career mode is feeling more authentic than FIFA 20. And we get to choose a sponsor. So on that note, I just want to say a massive thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring today's video. The OneFootball app is available for both iOS and Android, and through the app you can follow all of your favourite clubs, competitions and players, receiving the latest news and updates as and when they happen. Whether you're looking for the latest European action or to keep up to date with your local team, the OneFootball app is a fantastic news source and personally I use it pretty much every day. I'm originally from Oxford, I currently live in Kent though and I don't really get along to too many Oxford United matches so through the app I keep up to date with the club's latest goings on and use OneFootball to track their scores every week receiving push notifications for each and every update. The Club World Cup's coming up soon enough as well, so if you're a Liverpool fan for example then you might want to use the app to keep up to date with that. Or alternatively, maybe like myself, you recently watched Flamengo's incredible comeback against River Plate and you want to cheer them on in the competition instead. As I mentioned before, the OneFootball app covers plenty of different leagues and competitions all throughout the world, and the great news is that it's completely free to download. So if you haven't already got it installed on your phone, then there's no real reason not to at least try it out. There'll be a link to the app in the description down below, and I highly recommend checking it out and giving the app a go. So huge thanks to them once again for sponsoring today's video. Let's get into it though, and let's take a look at what FIFA 10 career mode has to offer. We've already seen that the game has got more authentic news stories, and we get to choose a sponsor, so that's already two things that the game is doing better than FIFA 20, but yeah, what else does this game have to offer? It all looks pretty basic, there aren't too many menus, but yeah, let's get into it and let's see how this game holds up 10 years later. First of all then, let's take a look at team management, where we've got the ability to manage the team, as you'd expect from a team management page. We've got a player growth system and we've got the ability to turn the assistant coach on or off. I'm not entirely sure what the assistant coach does in this game, so to be on the safe side, let's just leave it on. Managing the team, you can take care of the squad, the formations, custom tactics, quick tactics, and player roles. And one thing that's really impressed me within the squad menu is that if you change your player's position, then their rating changes to reflect that. So Rio Ferdinand becomes a 23 rated goalkeeper, and Edwin van der Sar becomes a 29 rated right back. You don't get that in the current games. If you change a player's position, their rating doesn't update to reflect that, whereas in the old games, it did. I don't know exactly when they got rid of that system, but in my opinion, this was so much better than the current one. So, yeah, once again, FIFA 10 career mode is doing something better than FIFA 20 career mode. It's a 10-year-old game, and yet in some ways, it's still superior. And the player growth system is also quite impressive. You can click on each individual player and you get a little graph that comes up showing you how they're doing, whether they're progressing, whether they're declining. 
Raphael is obviously on the up, Ryan Giggs is on his way down, same situation with Gary Neville, and throughout the course of each season you can just easily keep track of how each player is doing and mark their progress throughout the course of each season. It's a nice system, and FIFA 10 career mode has genuinely just done an incredible job in this department. I love the way that it's laid out and... Yeah, and in terms of the transfer system in this game, I believe that you can only sign up players that are available on the transfer market, which has its pros and cons. Obviously, you can't just go straight out there and sign Messi and Ronaldo as you can in the current games. You have to look at the transfer market, see who's available, and it should provide more of a variety in terms of who you're signing up. You're not just going to go after the same players every single time. You've got to scour the market and try and get the best deal possible. And at the moment, David Beckham is available. He's 34 years old, 82 rated, currently playing out in the States for LA Galaxy. Let's see about bringing him back to Old Trafford. In fact, he's on 28 grand a week, and at the moment we can't afford it, so we'll see about shifting some of that transfer budget into the wage budget. We'll move things about a bit, and hopefully we'll be able to sign up David Beckham. Slightly frustrating, but I've just had a look through the menus, and as far as I can tell, you can't actually switch the money between your transfer budget and your wage budget. You're stuck with those values, so unless we sell some players, we can't get any more wage budget, so... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell a few players and then hopefully we can bring in David Beckham. Michael Owen, sorry mate, but you're now available for sale. Same thing with Tosic, he never made much of an impact at the club in real life, so I'm not too sad to see him go. Federico Makeda can also leave. Incredible debut after that though. Never really did much ever again. He was 74 rated at 17 and from there it all kind of went downhill really, didn't it? So... Sorry mate, but you're also going to be out for sale. I don't know who that guy is in the picture, but that is definitely not Obertan, and he is also going on the transfer list. Richie Delat is wanted by Spurs, so I'm more than happy to accept that. Darren Gibson is off to Burnley. Kushak is wanted by Wigan. Makeda is off to Arsenal. Obertan is heading to Sunderland. Chelsea want Michael Owen, but I'm not going to accept that actually. I want to keep hold of him. Tosic is going to Spurs and Everton want to sign up Michael Owen now. I didn't really want to sell him to Chelsea. Selling a former Liverpool youth player to Everton though, I can get behind that. So I'm now just going to chuck loads of money at David Beckham, give him the best goal bonus possible and hopefully he'll be moving back to Old Trafford. Here we go then, you can't do this in FIFA 20 career mode. David Beckham, welcome back to Manchester United. What a moment. Moving on to the tables and stats menu now then, and there's nothing too remarkable here. We've got the league table, fixtures and results, top 20s, player stats, and seasonal performance. In fact though, clicking on the seasonal performance tab, you get a very detailed breakdown. You get shooting stats, you get passing stats, tackling stats, balls won slash lost, and you also get details of exactly how many yards the players are moving in each game. So, yeah. Very detailed, very informative, and this menu is genuinely incredibly impressive. I didn't think it was going to be anything special, but once you go into it, the detail involved in this menu is remarkable, quite honestly. For a 10-year-old game to be offering all this and for FIFA 20 to offer pretty much nothing, this is incredible. And finally then, we're going to take a look through the club management system. So you've got board assessment, player contracts, calendar, staff upgrades, manager history, and the ability to edit your kit number. Board assessment is pretty standard, still have that in FIFA 20. Player contracts, pretty self-explanatory. The calendar doesn't look like you can sim through the calendar, so the simulation process must have been incredibly slow in this game, but never mind. Staff upgrades though, this is very interesting. You can upgrade your attacking staff, your midfield, defensive, goalkeeping, fitness coaches, you can improve your head scout, you can improve your negotiation skills, and you can also improve your stadium manager. So yeah, so many options here, so much to improve, and... I wish they had this in FIFA 20. All that's left for me to do now then is to change David Beckham to number seven and get into some gameplay. So we're taking on Chelsea. I believe it's for the Community Shield. So it's the first chance to win some silverware. Not really a trophy that anyone cares about, but there you go. We will do our best to win it. I believe it's on legendary difficulty though. So yeah, can't remember the last time I played this game. I'm probably going to get absolutely smashed, but never mind. Hopefully we'll have some fun with it though. And just look at those kits. They are bringing back some serious memories. Back in the days when we had players like Wayne Rooney at his peak, Van der Sar, 
Dimitar Berbatov. These days we've got the likes of Jones, Pereira, and I uh, don't even want to go any further with the current squad. Let's just take a look at who we've got available and cry a little bit. Seriously though, just look at that starting eleven. That is ridiculous. Let's get into this game against Chelsea anyway though, and let's see about winning the Community Shield. Kickoff time now then, and to begin with, I'm just going to pass it around. I don't want to lose possession too early because I probably can't tackle, and then they're probably going to go and score. So, yeah, keep hold of the ball and see what we can accomplish. Probably not very much. The plan has gone horrendously wrong. They're in already with Anelka. He tries to chip the keeper, but he's messed it up, thankfully. Carrick's got hold of it in midfield, plays that across two pool skulls. He moves it forward to Wayne Rooney. David Beckham's got it out wide now. Can he deliver a perfect cross? Nope. Apparently crossing in this game is about as good as it is in FIFA 20. They threw on goal again. The keeper's coming out and this time they've not messed up the chip. It's into the back of the net. Drogba's the scorer and Chelsea have a 1-0 lead in the Community Shield. Time to test out David Beckham's free kicks now then. Can we get a goal back? Can we make it 1-1? David Beckham lines up and he's hit the bar. That is so much closer than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to make an absolute mess of it, but... No, we've hit the bar, and we're very unlucky not to be level. Wayne Rooney's on the attack here, working it into the box. I've nearly ran it off the pitch there. I'm pretty poor at this game, and that shot pretty much says it all. That was abysmal. 62% possession, 100% shot accuracy, 91% passing accuracy. We are absolutely smashing it, other than the fact that we're losing 1-0. Also, David Beckham hit the bar from that free kick, so I'm not too sure those stats are entirely correct, but there you go. Let's get into the second half, and let's see if anything changes. The way that I played in that first half, though, I'm not going to lie. If things do change, it's probably just going to be Chelsea scoring a few more goals. Balak's got hold of it here. He's in so much space, and he's absolutely smashed it past Van der Sar. Incredible goal, and it's now 2-0 to Chelsea, and he fully deserves that one. Let's take another look on the replay. I'm not entirely sure who that was that went sliding on his bum, but there you go. Terrible defending from me. Incredible goal from them. And we're now losing 2-0. Carrick's got hold of it here. Moves it forward to Dimitar Berbatov. And he's made an absolute mess of that. Apparently finesse shots aren't very good in this game. Or at least I'm not very good at finesse shots in this game anyway. One or the other. We've got a chance from the spot now then. David Beckham is the man to take. Can we make the most of the situation? I don't know how to take penalties and I've not pressed anything. The computer's done that for me. He's gone right down the middle and we can't even score a penalty. In fact, we can't even take a penalty because I took so much time that it's, it's all just gone wrong, let's be honest. Dimitar Berbatov looks absolutely devastated. We've lost 2-0 and just to make matters even worse, David Beckham has suffered a groin strain. This did definitely not go as planned, said the manager. Yeah, that sounds about right. I do quite like the fact that you get a Sky Sports article though. So they've got Talk Sport, they've got Sky Sports. I don't know if they've got any other deals in the game, but the fact that they've got those two genuine news sources written into the game is genuinely quite impressive. We don't have that in FIFA 20. We did have it in FIFA 10. So on that front, FIFA 10 career mode was genuinely better than FIFA 20. Next up then, we're taking on Blackburn Rovers. David Beckham is of course out injured for this one, so he won't be playing. We've changed the team up a bit and hopefully... We can pick up a win. Rooney plays it to Dimitar Berbatov. He moves it out wide to Ryan Giggs, who delivers a terrible cross, and it goes straight to Chimbonda. That's a blast from the past. We've got another go at it here. Carrick's on it, and Carrick's lost it. Chance here from the corner now, then. Ryan Giggs delivers it over to Ferdinand. It's going to drop it for Nemanja Vidic, and we scored. We've actually found the back of the net. It's 1-0, and I think we're finally getting a hang of this game. Yeah, maybe not then. We've just lost 2-1 to Blackburn. And after just one league game in charge, they're already considering our position, so... Yeah, it could be going slightly better. We lost the Community Shield. We lost 2-1 to Blackburn. And now we might even lose our job. Brilliant. David Beckham's back from injury, though. We're taking on Arsenal. Let's see if we can go out with a bang. Can we beat Arsenal? This is going to be the final game of the video, so... Yeah, let's make it a good one. Eduardo's on the attack here, and look at that tackle from Evra. He moves it forward to Nani. He plays it on to Dimitar Berbatov. He moves it on to Hargreaves. Rooney's got hold of it now. Plays it on to Berbatov. Massive opportunity. Can we make the most of it? It falls for Nani, and we've just missed an open goal. That is so embarrassing. They're even showing a replay of it. They're just rubbing it in now. Berbatov probably should have scored. Nani definitely should have scored, and yet... 
We've missed it. It's still nil-nil. And that missed open goal was pretty much the best thing that happened in that game, so... Yeah, that probably tells you everything you need to know about the overall quality of it. Nil-nil victory, though. Brilliant. I'm playing so poorly that I'm taking nil-nil as a victory, apparently. That says it all. Anyway, though, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave it a like if you have done. Have an awesome day, and I'll catch you again next time.